Catholic presents Meet the Students. Today's host is Erwin Villanova, and in today's episode, we will be discussing the physics of boxing. And we have a physics presentation by Joseph Fernandez, Saga Patel, and Erwin Villanova on the physics of boxing. Enjoy. Hi, this is Mr. Showers, period 3 class, and we're going to be talking to you about the physics of boxing. Even in the sport of boxing, physics can be seen in all aspects of the game. However, we will be looking at how physics can help a boxer in both throwing a punch and taking a hit to the face. When the fighter has his hands in their initial ready position, his fists have potential energy originating from muscles and various body functions. As soon as the, bottom, as the boxer starts to move his shoulders and his arms, and eventually the fists, his or her potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. Okay, kinetic energy is calculated by using the formula Ke equals one half mass times velocity squared, um, where m is the mass of the object, and in this, cam in this case the arm, the fist, and the bo boxing glove, and v is the velocity of the object. The fist has its maximum velocity when it hits something. This collision causes the fist to slow down and eventually when the fighter begins applying a force to retract his arm, the fist stops and returns to the fighter. This speed is calculated using velocity equals distance divided by time. As you can see, there are two ways to make a fist go faster, by lengthening the distance or shortening the time. The distance can be lengthened to a maximum of the fighter's arm length, but the time will depend on the training and the acceleration of the arm. But what is the advantage to a faster punch? We can investigate this by taking a look at the concepts of momentum and impulse. Momentum can be seen as an object's tendency to resist change in acceleration, and its formula is momentum equals mass times velocity. An impulse is the change of momentum of a certain object and uses the formula impulse equals force times time. Now what does this have to do with boxing? Well, this becomes more evident when looking at a punch in steps. 1. Before a fist makes contact with a face, it has a certain momentum, and a stationary head would, would have zero momentum. Number 2. During the contact, there is a transfer of momentum from the fist to the arm to the head of the opponent. Number three, although momentum is conserved when looking at both boxers, just looking at the person taking the hit, his or her momentum has changed from zero to whatever momentum was transferred from the fist. Now, to return to the question of why a faster punch can be more effective, it is because with the mass of a fist being constant, by increasing velocity, the momentum that the punch carries is larger. But the change in momentum or impulse that the opponent's head experiences increases. During contact, the boxer taking the hit would experience the same impulse, whether his or her head is moving towards the punch or is moving away from it. It is important to understand that this doesn't mean that the boxer would feel the same impulse if he or she was moving towards the punch before the fist made contact with his or her face. It must be after contact is made. Even though the impulse or change in momentum experienced would be the same for both cases, by meaning the head away from the punch increases the time interval in which the damage takes place. Meaning the force experienced from taking the punch will be reduced since it only takes a boxer a fraction of a second to throw a punch, a small reduction in time interval can produce large results. As you can see, the simple basic punching in boxing involves many physical concepts. By knowing these concepts, the boxers can know what aspects of their offense and defensive abilities need training, and we can have a more scientific approach to this sport. I'm sorry, that's all the time we have for today. Tune in next week on Meet the Students.